Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Dusha. Let's start episode 224 of Ask Vidas and Osha podcast. This question was sent by Stephen. And he writes, It would be an extremely interesting subject sometime for a podcast if you and Osha might consider discussing what the elements of a good free theme and a good few theme are as regards development. All the best, Stephen. So, um, Stephen, um, he he uh, frequently composes various organ compositions and he likes to create uh, uh, preludes and fugues out of free themes, not based on the choral melody. And uh, he wants basically to know if there are any themes that are unsuitable, you know, for musical development or or are any themes uh, suited better than others. So, of course, we could uh, take uh, examples of masterworks by, by various composers, right, Osha? True, yes, there are so much music written and... And when you play those pieces, Osha, do you notice that those melodies have something in common? <laughs> of course, all the you know musical melodies we have something in common, and that's the music notation and intervals, certain inter- intervals. So, which intervals basically are not very good for for developing? A theme in a prelude or, or a fugue, perhaps um, intervals which are difficult to sing? Yes, I think the big leaps maybe are not so suitable and not so common, although you could encounter them as well. But in general, when creating a subject or a theme for your piece, you need to know how will it sound if you will invert it. Mm-hmm. Because, especially in fugues, the technique you use is called invertible counterpoint. Exactly. For example, right now we are looking at uh, a Prelude and Fugue in uh, G Major by Bach, BWV 541. And uh, the fugue lends itself very well for the canon because it has uh, intervals of ascending fourths and uh, and uh, the ascending six and when you do that uh, at a certain interval you get a nice strato so f- every few every good few uh, usually has a, a strato but not always but uh, Composers tend to seek out elements of the theme that would be suitable for that. Sure. Right now I'm thinking about the C major fugue from Well Tempered Clavier, the first volume. It has a very nice treto at the end of it. And basically, this is a scholastic fugue because um, in in almost every measure you can find appearances of the theme. And in various ways, as you say, inverted, um, and um, and in canon, and and um, the composer created this fugue specifically out of this theme, uh, and uh, every measure is based on the theme, basically. So whatever you do in your fugue, you should always uh, think about the theme. And about, of course, counter subject. True. Is is the counter subject Im- important, Osha? Well, it's of course important, but but probably not as much as a theme, because uh, what you do with your theme that you actually need to have it throughout the piece. Mm-hmm. And whatever changes you do, we cannot, you know, go very far from the theme. You could do it augmented or diminished mm-hmm. in a long note values or in a short note values, but basically you still keep the same interval structure. 
But what you can do with a counter subject, actually in some fugues, the counter subject is kept throughout the piece. And actually that's a very high level of you know, polyphonic composition if you keep your counter subject the same throughout the piece. But in some pieces it changes all the time. Slightly. They say or even that more. they say that uh, it's m easier to compose a fugue with changing counter subject than to fixed counter subject. True, I believe it. Uh, and uh, we could analyze um, a theme or a counter subject based on on at least three elements: melody, harmony, and uh, rhythm. True. And um, every every melody, every subject and counter subject should have those um, melody rhythmic elements and harmonic elements well well fixed and well developed and um, encoded basically so that you could uh, develop your 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 piece entirely based on those three melodies let's say we take a look at the at the theme of of g major fugue by bach uh, and the melody, it has nice um, intervals, right? And it has a nice range. It doesn't exceed uh, an octave. That's usually... Yes, that's usually the case. Even I would say that most of the fugues are... You know, the theme are not exceed more than the sixth interval of the sixth. Yeah, six. except in a minor uh, mode, they allow diminished seventh. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, so then, then uh, here in G major fugue we have a range from D to B. This is a major six. That's about normal. Yes. If you have a, just a, a few notes of range, like a minor um, third, it's a little too 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 few notes, too few melodic intervals. True. Then you will not have a chance to develop them. And maybe if that's the case, your your counter subject should be contrasting and with wider leaps, right? True. Um, so, so then, uh, of course, melody should be singable. Uh, basically, you you need to write those intervals and sing yourself. Can you sing that fugal theme yourself? That's that's another. Thing. That's why we uh, try to avoid uh, augmented intervals. Yeah. And wide re leaps, wide leaps um, above uh, major six, let's say. What about uh, the rhythm? What do you see here, Osha? Well, most of the uh, you know, folk themes we are consist of. Eighth notes, quarter notes, some sixteen notes. So whatever meter you, you decide to create, you have to use the values that are suitable for that meter. True. Um, well, some composers choose to use like triplets, special tuplets, as they say, and which is quite uncommon. Uh, because they then you mix duplets with triplets and uh, in a fugal theme it's not very very often seen true i think it's better to to stick with the common values mm -hmm. such as eight notes quarter notes 60 notes because uh, with the counter subject if you do uh, let's say 16 notes or eight notes and with the subject, if you do triplets, you have a hard time of mixing them together as a performer. True. Mm -hmm. Then it's maybe better to change the meter altogether and write in a six, eight, eight meter. Yes. What about uh, the harmony? Of course, uh, fugal theme is, um, is a melody for one voice. Uh, of course, we have sometimes double fugues w w where two voices enter um, subsequently one after another. 
and then some harmony can be traced right out of those two voices but it's quite un uncommon if you're just starting writing fugues of course we recommend sticking to one theme that's right but already i think you know that uh, most of the box fugues we could be analyzed you know in terms of harmonical chords definitely let's say uh, we have the stronger beats in 4 4 meter every every two beats we have a rather strong emphasis on the note and here we have uh, to change the harmonies and let's see how Bach does the first measure has D and G so on D you could uh, harmonize as the dominant chord of the G major on, on G you could harmonize what? Tonic. Tonic. Then, um, then the second measure starts with the suspension. Mm -hmm. um, basically F sharp is the main note. Yes, and you have a dominant again. That's very common for you know openings of any piece. When you need to establish the key, you use dominant and tonic chords. Dominant tonic, dominant tonic, and then the second chord is uh, on the note uh, B, which is also a tonic, obviously. Yes, but where, where you also have some A note, this would be sort of something of a sub, of a dominant, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and so basically, it's just just a just the position of dominant and tonic uh -huh. throughout the subject. Yes, and the second half of the third measure he has um, denoted G, right? We could harmonize it as the tonic also. And the fourth measure begins with, with the dominant function ending of the fugal theme. So, in every measure we we should have at least two chords yes. present uh, and uh, sometimes subdominant too True. tonic dominant and subdominant they they work well and um, remember we could have inversions not only root position chords but inversions so when you write uh, a theme for yourself on a sheet of paper maybe write on a two steps on the higher step you could write um, as a theme and the, in the lower step you could add the bass line That's right. right and this bass line might be the basis for your counter subject true speaking of, of which what is, what is different what is the difference between subject and counter subject right here in the second line are they similar or contrasting i'm looking at it right now i'm trying to decide when the theme has eight notes what does the sub counter subject has of course when counter subject has the smaller note values that's very typical for when for the, counter subject when the theme subject has a smaller note values counter subject has the longer note values mm -hmm. and vice versa basically it's a dialogue between two voices true one is speaking and another is listening yes and because if everybody would try to speak at the same time then you would have just chaos mm -hmm. and since we didn't have any tied over notes or just one one syncopation in in the theme uh, there are there are syncopations in in the counter subject as well more of them right to to make an interesting rhythmic element oh, that's right but if we if we look at the melodic element of the counter subject it has this wide leap upwards an octave upwards also what does the subject do at that moment it goes down down it's an opposite direction always try to create a mm, contrasting motion between two voices and that's very good for making two voices independent 
But you could also have you know, parallel motion, for example, when the third voice will come in and you will have you know, a theme, the counter subject and the third voice. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you, if you have um, three voices later on, you could easily create a fugue with two counter subjects, which are fixed and they are um, interchangeably connected and they could be inverted. In, in used in various combinations, in various voices. This is called permutation fugue, uh, where soprano suddenly becomes the bass, alto becomes soprano, or the bass becomes alto or soprano, any, any number of combinations. But then there is one, one caveat to avoid. What is the least used uh, inversion of the tonic chord, Osha. For sixth chord. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we have to check if there is no such intervals of, as the fourth bit be above the bass, right? Or the fifth above the bass, uh, because in inversion they would create fourths or fifths. A fifth in itself is good. But fourth, when you invert, is, is makes makes a six four chord. So what do we use instead? Six, six chord. And Probably. basically intervals of yes. the thirds and sixths. If you want to use yes. this invertible counter. And actually, if you know, if you really want to compose fugues, then you have to study the fugues written by great composers, and you know. Most famous collections probably would be the well-tempered clavier by G.S. Bach. Mm -hmm. Then probably if you want to study more modern style, you could, you know, study Hindemith's, Paul Hindemith's Ludus Tonalis. And don't forget um, Art of Fugue. Yes, Art of Fugue, of course, but that might be too complex, maybe. <laughs> don't you think so? And another composer would be probably the Dmitry Shostakovich. Also, his 24 preludes and fugues. In a modern style. Yes, in a modern style. I think he also got his inspiration from G.S. Bach. Mm -hmm, that's right. If I remember correctly, prelude and fugue in C major doesn't have any accidentals at all. I think so, yes. White keys only. Uh, so that's that's the start, right? So not every melody is suited for uh, fugal development. Maybe you know if it's hard for you to create your own theme for a beginner, you could you know pick up some of of, of you know these composers' themes and try to create fugues. Mm -hmm. What about the prelude? Prelude, of course, it's another another story. Maybe we could leave it for sure. another conversation yes. in the in the next podcast, right? Um, maybe we should start it with the prelude, but <laughs> since we started with the fugue, now prelude comes next. later. Okay, guys, this was Vidas. And Osha. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. <laughs>